Hello, my name is Yolanda Davis. I am an Apache NiFi Committer and PMC member, and I've created this video to show you some of the latest features in the Jolt Transform JSON processing. For anyone who is new to using Jolt and NiFi, please check out my blog at the URL below, and I actually go through the reason why it's great to use Jolt for transforming JSON schema um, in the context of your flow and how to configure it. So I go through a lot of that detail in that article below. Okay, so for those of you who are familiar with using Jolt and NiFi, as you can see, one of the new changes is the addition of caching support for transformation objects that are created by Jolt. So every time you define a specification, uh, the processor will create a transformation object using that specification. And that's the component that actually does the work of changing the schema of any incoming data. Creating that object is pretty expensive from a performance standpoint, and even more so when leveraging expression language within your specification, which is another new feature we'll talk about in a bit. So having the ability to cache those objects definitely helps out in performance. And if you anticipate the processor will need to create many objects based on how you defined your spec, you can adjust the size of the cache right here in the transform cache size property. All right, so I hinted at this a minute ago, but let's get into some of the fun updates in specification support for this processor. A big change behind the scenes is the upgrade to Jolt 0.1.0, which added three new transformation operations that are focused on modifying the values within JSON data. Previously, Jolt was focused primarily on changing schema, whether it's simply changing a label of a key or something more complex like changing hierarchy. But now with these new modifier operations, we can actually change or transform the values within the JSON data, making this processor a bit more powerful out of the box instead of having to access or create your own transformation object and configure this processor to use it. Now you have a bit more operations available to you. The other thing you'll see me highlighting here is the new support for expression language. That's a really big deal. Before, our specifications were very static, but now we can make them more dynamic, either on the left or the right side of the specification. So that means you can either um, have dynamic or lookups for um, incoming labels or key values or you know, dynamic values for um, uh, what you save on the right side or the values itself. The other areas that you saw me highlight and kind of hover over there are the operations where I'm using or leveraging the modify, the new modify transformations. That particular modify overwrite is very helpful to take whatever value that's coming in and you can overwrite it with some new value. In this particular case, I'm actually invoking a function. So for tweet text, I'm going to actually make that text lowercase. So I want all that text to be in lowercase letters. So that allows me to invoke it there. The modify default beta, and all of these are considered beta at this point, hence that label. Um, the modify default beta is used to interrogate the incoming values and notice that tilde on the left hand side that says if this value is null then defaulted to the value given on the right. So that's just a way of just providing some default um, values, especially if you have databases don't set null or some other particular requirement. And as you can see, I'm testing it out. Um, notice my replacements, however, aren't complete. So if you take a look, I had some attributes that I needed populated in um, or expression language. And because this is a test environment, I don't actually have access to um, flow file attributes because you know my flow isn't running. So what you see me doing is using the advanced UI's new attributes modal which will allow you to provide test variables to try out within the context of the UI. 
Now, these variables aren't available when you're actually running the flow, but it's just really good to have um, to be able to try out um, expression language within the spec. So now that I've saved those attributes and I rerun, notice that I am actually see my tweet ID come across, translated from that ID variable. Um, it matched up the ID to the actual um, variable itself and translate the label. And then you notice also that the tweet text was lower, uh, made lowercase. That was done by the modify overlay. And then all of my data that I had that was null in the in reply to fields, those were replaced properly. But just to see, you know, how this guy really works. What happens if I actually have data? I want to make sure that that data comes across. And as you can see, that came across just fine and wasn't replaced. And then finally, notice my flow file ID. I did get the test variable that I set up for UUID. So that's pretty cool. One other thing that I said a moment ago, but I just want to show and emphasize, is you're not just limited to using um, attributes or variables within expression language here. You can also use functions. So in this particular case, I'm just going to use a uh, function here so that you can see that we can easily apply it. This was just a, a function that said less than. So that actually returns a true and notice that that's the value that was populated when we test it out. So definitely gets your mind churning on the types of things now that we can incorporate within our specification. All right, so let's go ahead and save this specification. Remember, those attributes we had earlier, they don't get saved. We'll save it and run our flow. So in this particular flow, I'm not only I'm getting Twitter data, transforming it with Jolt Transform JSON, and I'm storing it not only as a file, that put file you see at the bottom, but I'm also storing it in a Mongo database. And just so you can see, there's our transform data, you know, some of the um, items that I have, you know, values were replaced. Later on down the line, you'll see that I actually received some values um, that weren't uh, replaced, but or actually, actually had values that came across, so they didn't receive a default value like in that particular example right there. And um, just a really quick uh, an easy way to not only transform data, but also very powerful now that our specifications are more dynamic. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you're looking for more information on using Apache NiFi, be sure to check us out on nifi.apache.org.